global leaders in video surveillance, the Brits. Think it's hard to pick out a particular face in a crowd? Try getting a computer to do it well. And what we're trying to do is develop technology that's able to be more robust at recognizing a person's face. Say hello to the new face of recognition software set to change the way a computer sees you. If you think about the technology that's used at the moment, what tends to happen is that a 2D image is captured and then various features are measured. So, for example, the length of the nose, the distance between the eyes, and ratios are taken of those features and used to form a signature that can recognize a person. Melvin Smith's team is trying to overcome one big problem. If that person changes their expression or changes the pose, looks to one side, or even if the lighting changes, then those sorts of systems can fail. So together with colleagues at Imperial College London, they created PhotoFace, a system that gives computers a lot more to go on. We illuminate the face in different ways, using different lighting setups. There's a camera that shoots 500 frames a second. It's synchronized to four lights that go off in such quick succession, looks like a single flash. An ultrasound sensor triggers the whole thing. So I'm going to pass through now. Just like that. So just a simple stroll through, nothing particularly complicated there. And then what it's doing now is a little bit of processing to estimate my shape. And there you can see it's estimated my shape. And hopefully, there you go, it's recognized who I am, so it knows that I can pass through. PhotoFace takes four images, lit at different angles, and compiles them into one. So this is some four raw images of me that we captured before. And then we need to convert that to some sort of shape information. What it's showing is that the blue areas are at a grazing angle to the camera like that, and then the green areas are more parallel, and then red areas are that way. Uh, it's just a way of visualizing it. But essentially what we have is the orientation of the skin at each point on the image. What it means is that we can capture very fine textual features on the face, the wrinkles, the pores, all the blemishes that we naturally have. We can capture all that detail. So in addition to capturing the shape of the face, we can also use those blemishes as a kind of signature to recognize someone. The system recognizes faces even under changing light. If we change the lighting conditions, it doesn't make any difference. If the sun's out, we can take that into consideration. That doesn't change the 3D shape. As long as we know where these raw images are from, the 3D shape of my face is constant. Hey, could you just move slowly your lips? Across the hall, colleagues are working on a 4D system. It's a variation on photo face using strobe lights instead. We are going to capture right, the face of somebody and then use that information to create 3D. But we'll do that in real time. They can look at the changing face any way they want. It allows us to have higher resolution information, so we could like zoom in parts of the face and have a closer look at it. That also opens up possibilities in biometrics, because we might be able to use the way in which a person smiles as a biometric. So, for example, the way in which you and I smile is probably subtly different, the way in which the smile develops across the face. So that in itself could be a useful biometric. Systems like this make it easier for security teams to identify a suspect in a crowd because they can alter the image on file for comparison. So the person you see in the crowd may be standing to one side so their face isn't clear and the lighting may not be ideal. So what you could do is take the model that you have of that person's face and then synthetically alter that model to match the face in the crowd. So you would alter the direction in which it is looking, alter the lighting that's applied to it to make it as similar as possible to what you're actually seeing and then look for a match. It could also be used by the movie biz. If you think of what you see at the cinema nowadays, it's very impressive. You go to see a 3D movie, it looks very realistic, but it's not interactive in any way. So if you move your head to one side, things don't change as they do in the real world. And also different people in different locations within the cinema will be able to see different things. So what we want to be able to do is capture something that's much more immersive and much more realistic. In the more immediate future, 4D imaging could change lives. So the idea is that we could have some technology like this that a general practitioner could use to capture a very accurate and very realistic description of a skin condition and then send that over the internet to a specialist in a remote location who could uh, interact with that in a, as though they were with the patient. But never fear, it's imaging that's almost, but not quite, as good as the real thing. Say cheese.